Okay, hi everyone. We're going to get started. I am not the main speaker today, but I'm going to introduce and participate a little bit. Um, my name is Jim Horowitz. I do some work with Wikipedians and Residents as part of our company with the Blueprint. And uh, Gio is the program officer for cultural heritage at the Wikimedia Foundation, doing an excellent job of helping us liaise at a more uh, at scale and in a more sophisticated, organized way. Uh, with cultural institutions, um, GLAM support of the foundation is really important uh, for institutional buy-in. And uh, this kind of analysis that you're gonna see is very unique. No one has done this before. It's a very close look at working groups and not just what a working group is, but examples from different organizations of how they have used different GLAMs have used working groups in different ways to advance their goals. So I'm gonna hand it over to Gio. And uh, you're going to hear from Jamie as well and some other folks. This is a really great room, a lot of familiar faces and people from cultural institutions and with Canadian residents and working group members. So I think we really want to uh, do a deep dive into like how we scale capacity at institutions. And I think working groups is one of the answers. And Gio is going to tell you what she's learned. Thank you so much. Hey, everyone. Thank you. So as Jake said, this is kind of a new topic. This is my first time officially presenting about this. So as you probably know, if you have experience, you know, presenting about new topics, the first presentation is kind of challenging. So I, I, I wish this was my, like my second presentation about this topic, but it's not, it's my first. Um, so um, during the last couple of years, the Glamwiki community has been seeing the rise of working groups organized within Glamwiki institutions. This type of committed engagement has been particularly seen in the US. Um, three examples of this type of engagement we will be seeing today with the Digital Public Library of America, the Biodiversity Heritage Library, and the LD4 community. And I might say that like, even though we have these um, examples in the US, I really wish that we would see more examples outside of the US but more in North America and in other countries and other regions as well. But we are focusing today on the ones that we have. Wait, okay. So I'll be talking specifically about working groups um, in GLAM institutions. There is a way uh, to think about this uh, outside of the GLAM institutions and like think about Wikimedia working groups as well. This could be like a, a whole new topic that we can even discuss at the end of this um, presentation, but we will be focusing with uh, on GLAM institutions, right? And so um, I have been participating in this working groups for two years now. And a few months ago, I was, I don't know what I was doing, but I, I found this old uh, blog post that I wrote. And I was like, let me just see what I wrote there. You know, you know, when you find some things that you wrote like a few years ago and you just don't like, you don't see it uh, yourself anymore in that, um, in that blog post and that <laughs> content. But then the last, um, for this in specific blog post is not the case. I actually was like, oh, this is okay. And I really, I really like the, the last thing that I wrote there, which is, um, uh, the advice that I would give to volunteers or GLAM professionals who would like to develop GLAM initiatives on Wikimedia projects is to better understand its community and to really interact with the users. This will create a very active, even if small, group of people around the institution's collections or collection, which will help to organize events, campaigns, and even protect and enhance the content, allowing it to be taken care of by Wikipedia and on all of its sister projects, and therefore also on the current entire digital ecosystem. And what I was talking about there, that there in this phrase, and I had no idea yet what it meant, was this idea of working groups. And I, I really wanna like clean into that, right, today. So when I am, you know, um, starting a new GLAM partnership, and this is, um, I, I don't do this that much uh, within the foundation because we like the way that we work, that we support partnerships um, already happening. And, and like when there is an institution that wants to do a GLAM partnership, we try to direct that institution to the community, the local community, right? But when I do have to go through the entire process, this is the step-by-step -step that, I, that I have. 
So first the partnership, then the legal aspects, so the, the, the licensing, the technical aspects. So, so like what tools are we using? Um, how like do I have do I have to clean the data to 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 upload the the data and the, the images, like all of that is connected to that part is the third one, technical. And then outreach, which I'll like jump a little bit now. And then for last, we have metrics, right? So like we want to know the impact of our work. And because of the nature of this specific conference here with Corona America, we talk a lot about um, the technical and the metrics, like those two problems and how like we lack support for that. I do understand this. This is, was like the, <laughs> the previous presentation in this room and most of like our conversations because we understand that this these two are like very important and um, you know hot topics at the moment and we need to do a lot of work with those areas. But I wanna focus on the fourth one today, which is outreach, because I think that the working groups, they 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 engage specifically in that part. So it is the part that we are asked to organize events and campaigns and engage volunteers and think about new uh, initiatives, connect to weak projects and overall just engage with the community. Uh, we here are the community. Uh, we are the movement. So I think like most of us, we know how to interact with these specific activities. But the thing is that um, even though we are great at what we do, we why like even though like the Wikimedia projects and the movement are all about collaboration, why why we are so bad at collaborating and working together, basically. <laughs> we work a lot in silos, right? And this is specifically true for Wikimedians and residents. So I want to have this um, question right here for us to think about during the session, and I will come back to this at the end, okay? For you guys to, to help me answer, basically. So um, this is a heavy text uh, slide, and I'm sorry for that, and I'll be reading with you guys. So this is the suggested structure for working groups that I have been noticing uh, so far. So these working groups, they appear when there is a necessity for engaging communities to act on institution content, on one or several institutions content. It's usually connected to a topic or a big project. Uh, there is a group of people who are already interested in participating. It's a mix of internal and external people, like internal for to the institution and external to the institution. So like Wikimedians, right? Yeah. Um, there are recurrent and scheduled meetings to organize this work. They usually develop a charter and sometimes norms to be followed by the working group as well. They establish roles and responsibilities. They appoint chairs and co-chairs and they have other, depending on the working group, they also have some other kind of roles in there. So roles and responsibilities are established. They have uh, planned activities and they have different level of commitments that they expect from their members, basically. And now it's you, Jim, if that's great. Um, so there's a close overlap, kind of a Venn diagram overlap between Wikipedians and residents and working groups. <clears throat> A working group might hire or bring on a Wikipedia residence. They might ask me to find one for them, and I would do that, um, as with the Biodiversity Heritage Library. But it often or can go the other way, that an institution says, uh, finds out that, oh, well, we want to work with Wikipedia, so we need a Wikipedia residence, and they hire that person. And then it's kind of the job of the Wikipedia residence to build the working group, uh, the institutional capacity around themselves. And we're going to look at both cases either way, um, but a, a working group is not a substitute for a Wikipedia in residence and a Wikipedia in residence cannot do all of the work that a working group does. This is definitely something that is mutually beneficial. And the two case studies that we're gonna look at closely is DPLA, they had a Wikipedia in residence, um, and, but they needed more community engagement and feedback. And so they formed a working group. BHL at the Smithsonian, had a really active working group. I full disclosure, I'm the vice chair um, of the Wiki working group. Um, and they had all these great plans, but they needed someone to implement them on Wiki. And so bringing on a Wikipedia residence who will be announced like next week. Um, 
So there's a, a symbiotic relationship between working groups and Wikipedians and residents, but we talk a lot more about Wikipedians and residents, and I didn't even really have a concept of a GLAM working with GLAM wiki working group until this talk. Okay, so now I'll be talking uh, specifically about the case of the uh, Digital Public Library of America, the PLA. Um, so this working group came to be when they already, I made the thing appear again. Uh, <laughs> so as uh, Jake was saying, they already had a working in residence who is Dominic, who's organizing this conference. Um, and they already had um, before that a lot of um, um, projects that were funded by different sources, right? But in 2022, they had this slow funding um, to work on technical projects and they had a focus on sure they don't comment contributor contributions and they wanted to drive the reuse of described and attributed images. For that, the PLA was asked uh, through this, this grant to develop a path for one or more contributing institutions or hubs to share more of their descriptive metadata with the PLA and Wikimedia that could be reconciled with Wikidata entities. And they were also asked to create a process, the comment, uh, create process documentation and conduct outreach to other national scale aggregation, aggregation projects to share the PLA success, successes and learnings and to advocate for more contribut contributions to commons globally. Uh, in order to achieve that, uh, the PLA and by that Dominic, most importantly, um, created then the, um, the the Wikimedia working group to help to expand this expand the Wikimedia work. Right, the screenshot on the left is from uh, basically the announcement of this working group of this work, this outreach work, and on the right you can see um, the current uh, members of the working group. Um, so let me just. Oops. Um, yeah. So the working group has 10 members officially. Um, it was launched in September 2022. Currently is the institution's biggest working group. Uh, and we have been meeting this last two years monthly. Um, and the participants represent several institutions, uh, other than the PLA and myself representing the foundation, but also Boston Public Library, Harvard Library, National Agriculture Library, Harold Library, the National Archives, uh, the Washington State Library, George, Georgia Public Library Service, and the Ohio University Libraries. Uh, we can find more details uh, about the current members of the working group on that blog post. But I also wanted to talk to you about the structure of this working group. So this is one of the four, one of four, the PLA working groups. They have one about metadata, they have one about rights statements, and they have one about Wikimedia as well. And one more that I don't remember right now from the top of my head. But as I said, this is the biggest one. And they had the necessity for engaging communities to act on the PLA's content, especially on shredded data. And this group is a mix, a mix internal and external people who signed up and were already interested in participating. They have official an official charter and norms for the working group. And they basically are working for institutions that are part of the, the PLA network. So they are, they are part of the, the aggregation work that the PLA is already doing, or they are Wikimedians in residence in institutions that are outside of this um, network, but they are interested in being part of, of the um, discussions that are happening around uh, the PLA and they wanna learn more, they wanna learn more about Wikidata, about and having contact with other Wikimedia residents doing similar work. Um, so they also have recurring monthly meetings, a chair and a co-chair, co the chair is here. <laughs> Uh, they have, as I said before, different commitment levels. So like some, um, some members, they will be in the meeting and talk to us. Some members will do a little bit more work and some other members will like even present during um, conferences like we are doing now or participate in uh, coffee chats. So the, the presentation that happened in this room before this one was actually the 
um, the part of it was the recording of a DPLA cough chat, which was organized by this working group. Uh, as I said, they the members, they volunteer to participate in them or not. So this is kind of up to them. Uh, it's not like something that they are required to do. Um, so for the past few years, this group supported the PLA in their Wikimedia efforts, including data modeling and cleaning, as well as outreach, documentation activities, such as the development of the MetaWiki portal that, for the PLA, and coffee shops like the, the PLA, um, sorry, the... <laughs> The PLA Network Coffee Chat, Wikimedia Working Group, and Wikimedia Metrics and Tools, which is the one that we, we saw uh, before this presentation, which we just, um, which we presented right now. And we also had a similar presentation. So I had like a test presentation to this one during uh, Long Wiki in November, the conference. And yeah, they have been doing a lot of work with the commentation and um, presenting when we are asked to do so. And here we also have um, some of the, so the, the Pix Assist is a tool that Dominic developed and the working group helped to- uh, hmm? It's the Cubist tool. Yes, it is the Cubist tool. <laughs> <laughs> um, that like he developed and the working group gave a lot of feedback when he was developing this tool. And so it came to be basically also because of the support of this working group. And this is the portal that we are developing on Meta for to centralize the PLA activities. And so here I have some quotes. So one from Jamie, who is here as well, uh, senior Wikipedian and outreach specialist for, uh, for the National Architecture Library. I wanted to learn more about, do you want to read it? Sure. As I, do. Okay. I don't remember <laughs> when I said this. Hold on, we can. I wanted to learn more about DPLA and in turn hopefully encourage other research institutions, especially those that are agriculturally based or have a strong agriculture connection, uh, to consider and contribute um, to the DPLA Wikimedia pipeline. I see the working group as beneficial not only to not only DPLA, e.g., making editing and training easier for partners, but also for Wikipedia and other Wikimedia platform users as we create templates and bring together training and outreach models in an accessible place for all users. So our mission right now on Meta is to not only document ourselves and like our videos and the tools that we've made, but also um, the work of others like Mary Mark um has an amazing that she put together that I hope we can link to from there that you can print and it makes anything you want to do easy. If you want to work on write statements, if you want to upload, if you want to have an event, she has a step by step guide that guides you through all of it. Um, those are the kinds of things that we have there. I have like a, I don't think it's up there right now. And actually, we're still finishing up making this page live, but I also have like a quick start guide to editing that I've been using um, in all my training sessions and hoping to get that translated into Spanish soon. Um, and so those are the kinds of things that are there. Anything that you could want to think about. So not just joining the pipeline, but also navigating with the PDM related projects. Thank you. Here we also, oh, no, it's this one, yeah. Here we also have another uh, quote. Um, I, have, I, I chose to put those quotes in because not everyone could be at uh, Con North America this year, of course. So just to have them represented somehow. So uh, this is from even Rob from the digital repository. He's a digital repository librarian for the Washington State Library, uh, which is part of the, the, the PLA network uh, via the Northwest Digital Heritage. As a DPLA service hub coordinator for the Pacific Northwest, um, I understood that GLAM perspective and the GLAM technical requirements for the Wikimedia Commons pipeline, but I was still fairly Wikinavy. Serving on the Wiki on the working group has been a great way to interact with more experienced Wikipedians. I have participated in projects to enrich um, the PLA records with Wikidata, for example, and have and have had a place to ask questions and seek advice in the working group. This is from Rachel Helps, uh, Wikipedia in residence at the uh, 
Britain Young University. No, this is wrong. Is that correct? That's no, that's correct. Correct. yeah. Okay. Uh, Brigham Young University Library. And being part of the Wikimedia plus the PLA working group has helped me to share my knowledge of Wikimedia outside of my own institution and has helped me to understand the PLA's work on the Wikimedia projects. And now we are going to move on to the second um, example, which is uh, with the Biodiversity Heritage Library. For BHL, the Wikimedia Working Group is near and has been meeting monthly since December 2023, almost a year now, as an unfolding, as an unfolding of the publication Unifying Biodiversity Knowledge to Support Life on Sustainable Planet, uh, which is by uh, Jacqueline Dearborn, JJ, who is um, the data manager for BHL and also um, the um, the, not chair, but she's like the main organizer of the working group as well. Um, the group already met before, um, before this, um, um, before the 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 officially, uh, how can I say this? Like before the group established this itself officially, it had already been meeting before that, basically in a more kind of informal way, right? Um, but only in the last year, it had more an official engagement. It is composed of 35 members across 20 GLAM institutions, which are working alongside independent Wikimedians to unify biodiversity knowledge across an ecosystem of silo data repositories. Its members have supported BHL in, in their Wikimedia efforts with data modeling, especially on shared data on commons, as well as outreach and documentation activities such as development of a MetaWiki portal for BHL, which is still um, a work in progress and will be an activity for the Wikimedia residents. And the organization of the uh, Transforming Biodiversity Heritage Library Images on Shared Data on Commons, a two-part workshop to work on an agreed list of properties to be used on um, BHL's data on Wikimedia Commons. As I was saying, um, the so this the previous this this paper here, uh, to the to the to write this paper, JJ had to basically interview a lot of people and had it peer reviewed by a lot of people as well. And those people who interacted with her during that point were part of them also joined this working group later. So it was like that's why we say that this. Uh, paper was basically the start of this process because it uh, asked people to pay attention to what uh, BHL was doing, was interested in doing, and um, and come together after that, right? And uh, the day started to have some meetings with me and Fiona Romeo, who's uh, the manager for our team, the Culture Heritage team. And from that, we decided that it would be nice to have more people joining the call and you know uh, providing feedback to the work. And then it all came to be from that, basically. And from the white paper, um, JJ established some, what she called BHL Wikimedia recommendations. This is a Padlet. Uh, I can share the link afterwards. I didn't add it to the, to the presentation. But this, um, this Padlet, it has recommendations that she did in terms of Wikidata, Commons, Wikisource, Wikipedia, uh, Wikibase and general recommendations. As you can see here, um, this is a place where she could, in the working group, everyone together, could understand uh, what are, like from the recommendations that she was doing, uh, which were the priorities for them, right? And they could leave comments. So you can see, for example, Shivan's, oh, Shivan's name right there, leaving some comments. And you can see some other anonymous comments around the, the Padlet. And you can see that in some of them, there are thumbs up for the things that they wanted to see the most, right? And one of the things that were um, uh, like the ones that people voted the most was for example, to uh, to hire Wikimedia residents and this is being done right now, right? Um, and it's also interesting because you can see there uh, the last column it is a column about doing or done. So there are in fact planned activities uh, that are being um, 
that are being done because of this padlet, because of the organization of this working group. It's like a continuous work, right? And this is just an example of um, the data modeling that we are doing with BHL together with the group. This is available on Commons and it is there because like the working group has been um, um, discussing this idea, but they also want like even further from the working group um, feedback on what they are doing, right? I see some, some people taking pictures, so I'll stay here a little bit. Um, and one important step from this work is that uh, this work has been so amazing um, and aligned with a lot of the activities that we are doing at the foundation right now that we decided that it would be interesting to have a hypothesis in our um, uh, prison and tech annual plan. So uh, this first one uh, is already happening. It's happening from October to December. And the second one, which is uh, tentative yet, yeah, it's still a uh, draft. It will happen, but this text might change. So that's why I added tentative there. But basically, um, so the, the second one, it, might, it will happen from January to March. But the first one, which is just started, and we agreed, it was like this entire process to have this agreed, and, and not only agreed, but we co-wrote this hypothesis with the BHL working group members. Uh, so this is like a first for us, like a, a hypothesis in the annual plan that is not only written by the people in the foundation, but also community members and talk with them and like with feedback, direct feedback, and actually the, 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 the text is by the working group members as well, right? Mm -hmm. So if the BHL working group uh, creates common categories and descriptive guidelines for South American and or Sub-Saharan African species depicted in publications, they'll make 5,000 uh, images more accessible to biodiversity communities. So this is the work that we are going to be supporting with the, the, the working group and the Wikimedia residents for the next few months. Mm -hmm. And the structure for this working group, so similarly to what I did with the PLA, uh, this is, uh, it came to be because of the necessity of engaging communities to act on the BHL's data on Wikimedia. It has uh, staff from uh, BHL and the, the, the Smithsonian present at those, meet, the, those meetings as well. We have Wikimedians residents as well from other institutions, and we do have independent Wikimedians participating as well. We have recurring monthly meetings. We have an official charter and norms. We have monthly highlights that are shared within the, the within BHL and also outside of BHL, so with the community. We have reporting uh, on the this month in Glam newsletter as well. We do have a Telegram group. We have a chair, a vice chair. Uh, institutional representative, 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 well, representatives. Sorry about that, you guys. English is not my first language. Um, advisors, members, and observers. We also have activities that are documented and tracked on GitHub, and different levels of commitment as well as the PLA. And um, uh, in this case, we also have like a specific core team who's helping to um, organize some of the activities better and who are also hiring the, the Wikimedia residents. So this is where I admit that I know nothing about structured data, um, and yet they hired me to hire someone who does, but that's what I do. Um, I'm really good at finding good Wikimedians, and what I found in this process is that we are like bursting at the seams with uh, structured data expertise, and the capacity to do Wikipedians and resonance in the, um, the structured data space. And I think we had 13 applicants and we rated six of them, six out of six. It was like a bounty, it was wonderful. And it was also, of course, you know, there has to be only one um, at the moment. Yeah, well, I mean, that was, <clears throat> that was a suggestion, why not hire two? <clears throat> but uh, US government funding is the answer to that. Um, now, this was a really cool situation. This is an ideal situation for me as a facilitator of Wikipedians and residents because the institutional buy-in was there. And not just from a single champion, but from everyone who participated in that padlet, the number one requested uh, 
feature was a Wikipedian in residence. And so there's there's buy-in, um, there's staff buy-in, there's uh, internal and external buy-in, and there was funding, which is the ingredients you need to make a Wikipedia in residence happen and succeed. So this Wikipedia in residence who will begin uh, shortly um, is going to work on three different areas. Um, you know, generally liberating data. DHL has 62 million pages of archives. And this is, I mean, this is not uncommon for big institutions, but uh, the Wikipedia residence is going to set some priorities around what to start with, how to track metrics, moderating discussions, and also trying to get more funding. I think if was anyone was at the uh, Wikipedia in residence talk yesterday, Wikipedians in residence don't have a minor role to play in potentially getting more financial support for the work that they do. It, it can actually be mutually beneficial for the institution and the Wikipedia in residence. Um, on commons, there's an effort to enhance images, uh, specifically the metadata on commons. Ideally, BHL has its own kind of siloed knowledge graph. We need to get that to match up to the structured data on commons. We need a structured data expert to do that and develop some workflows and not just do it themselves for 5,000 images, but to provide training for staff to do it in bulk. And that is not certainly not something I am qualified to do. Um, and last, Wikidata is kind of the, the biggest frontier, mapping the metadata for entities. And this is a, a huge um, schema problem. Um, this is not trivial and it, it involves community con consultation. It involves using tools like OpenRefine. Uh, and then once the models are developed and matched, trainings, edit-a-thons, and recommendations for future projects. So this is like my dream scenario where, I mean, yes, it's the Smithsonian, that's not like actually my dream, but it's an institution that has buy-in, that's ready, has the group, and just needs the person to take the lead. That's, I'm not gonna say it's better than the DPLA model, but it's a really, really good situation for the Wikipedian and residents coming in because they're fully supported from the beginning and they're not alone. Okay, here is um, just a quote from our um, most um, prestigious sure. chair. chair and prestigious Wikimedians uh, uh, in the BHL working group, uh, Siobhan, uh, who's a volunteer and citizen science for the Wikimedia projects for the Biodiversity Heritage Library and Bionomia. Uh, I had a history of engaging with the Biodiversity Heritage Library, both as a volunteer of the digital library and as a Wikimedia editor. I wanted to encourage the BHL community to engage more with the Wikiverse and the Wiki community to make more use of the BHL and its amazing natural history content. I see BHL Wiki working group as a way to encourage and assist both communities to benefit from each other's knowledge and skills in linking biodiversity knowledge. And here um, I'm gonna move to a Slightly different uh, example, but it's also fitting into the working group um, analysis, which is the LD4 with data affinity group, and they couldn't be here in this conference this year, so they recorded a video for us. Maybe I can play from here, but I also have on the other tab. Hi everyone, I'm Hilary Thorson. The Wikidata affinity group started in April 2018 as part of an Andrew W. Mellon Foundation funded grant called Link Data for Production that was intended to create link data for library resources. Part of the grant included contributing library data to the data. At the time, there wasn't a dedicated discussion space focused on incorporating Wiki data into library work. There were already some other affinity groups that were part of the grant and made sense to start one for Wiki data. The group has always been open to anyone to join. While the grant involves collaboration between well-resourced institutions, the affinity group is an opportunity to involve the broader library and beyond community and form a community of practice where we can share information, skills, and ideas in an informal space as we learned about the data together. Initially, I was working with the residents for the grant that the group and host societies were called to discuss different Wiki data related topics like policies, how to communicate in Wikimedia spaces, and gadgets and tools. And sometimes guests would present on Wikidata related projects that they were working on. Soon it became clear 
that having a space for hands on editing in Wikidata would be beneficial so people could learn to develop the same skills and ask questions together. Wikidata Working Hours started in 2020 during the week, so we didn't have calls. When my role with the grant ended later in 2020, when we moved on to another position, I asked the co facilitators who could help plan and host the sessions and have some truly wonderful people join me to help, including Susan and Sarah. The group has continued to evolve over the years as we've tried to keep in step with community needs and volunteer capacity. Thanks, Hillary. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Sarah Kasten. I'd like to share a few words about how the Wikidata community group is organized. We really try to emphasize the value of consistency, adaptability, and community in our ongoing events. We try to maintain a regular schedule so we can provide a sense of predictability and can build momentum over time. However, we have found it's also crucial to make, remain flexible in our approach and our format so we can continue to meet the changing needs of our community. To achieve this balance, we've implemented documented processes and workflows to make event planning run smoothly, and we hold monthly coordination meetings to plan events and manage administrative tasks. These meetings are open to all, and we have adopted a non-hierarchical and inclusive approach. In this environment, members can choose from different roles and volunteer opportunities that best suit their skills and interests, and try new things as their interest in adaptability allows. Our ongoing communication takes place via the LE4 Slack space and a Google group, which is fostered a strong sense of community. Additionally, we have a wiki project page and Google Drive space for documentation. We announce events through various Twitter and social media outlets geared toward our audience of librarians and other learning organizations. While we encounter challenges with long-term documentation and video storage, this community infrastructure keeps us connected and organized. Sustainability is a key aspect of our coordination. After five years of regular events, I think we also value the work we do in this community and would like to keep going and keep improving. Our dedicated long-term coordinators have been instrumental in maintaining consistency, and we have been joined by new members to bring fresh ideas and energy. Together, we continue to build a fun and welcoming community that values adaptability, inclusion, and shared knowledge. Hi. Hillary and Sarah have given you a good idea of how the group began and how the coordinators work to maintain our infrastructure and programs. I'd like to underline how our group provides on community volunteers an input to divide and thrive. As Hillary noticed, this group was founded with an open door mindset. Hillary was the original but Canadian in residence of the LP4 grant with data for production project, and she created the Wikidata Affinity Group with solid structure and programs. But the clear focus remains on welcoming the broader community through lack of barriers and widespread promotion. The coordinating group of volunteers that joined Hillary when she was back in the regular job and also a volunteer opted for a model of open, transparent governance, making our planning channel on spot and monthly meetings public and open to all community members. And by community, we mean anyone anywhere who sees any of our promotional messages by a mailing list or social media. All are welcome and there is no requirement for a level of commitment or term of service. People pitch in as they are able. And without that official commitment, we often find that we step forward to help each other even more readily than we can. As we have evolved and faced challenges of sustainability and stories on proprietary platforms, we have shared our question to the larger community and asked for ideas and support. The result of this openness is that we continue to evolve and experiment based on community ideas and engagement. Whenever, there, whenever a problem seems unsolvable, colleagues and volunteers have stepped up with exciting and new solutions. Working together toward the goal of sustaining this larger community makes for deep bonds, useful collaborative experiences, and an adaptive creative path to future growth for the Wikidata community. On this final slide, you can find the link to communicate with our group and how to join us and get us support.
Nope. Okay, so we have seen so far three examples of working groups that are very well documented, but we have seen from like from trying to understand this topic a little bit more and talking to people, I have seen that there are some working groups out there that we just don't know about. They are kind of not well documented and not like made available um, in our projects that much. And so in a highlight, um, one that I discovered recently, which is the, the Gaddy's uh, Wikidata Working Group. And so I was having this conversation with Robin Dodge, the manager of published materials, cataloging metadata from the Gaddy. And they um, told me that this is an internal forum where we hope that people across the Gaddy can get together and discuss their Wikidata projects and interests in new developments. We have had a lot of interest and some great discussions so far, and we are excited about the future potential of the group and our use of, and our our use and oh and oh, sorry and our use of and contributors to uh, with data. And um, they said that this working group came to be when the Kaplan collection was acquired. Um, they came up with the name sharing project. Part of it was to add artists to Wikidata who weren't there yet. And they have a Wiki project page for this pilot project available, but they don't have one for the, Get the Getty Wikidata affinity group. They have been having several meetings and a couple internal editathons. So it's really early days for them. And they are almost done with this collection, but they want to continue to do Wikidata contributions uh, for new collections and maybe even a, a, working with Wikimedia Commons as well, which they haven't done yet. Um, and so this is an, a great example of um, a working group that is not really out there yet. And I'm sure that this is just one of probably several examples. Uh, early this morning during the talk that uh, the, the Glam keynote, Sarah mentioned the Wiki allies. And I wrote this as a possibly um, something similar to this idea as well. And I wanna, talk more with you about that. And I also know that, um, you know, we have, um, um, Creative Commons have some groups, uh, some working groups that they work with, and they have had some conversations about having one that would be a little bit more focused on Wikimedia because Wikimedia is such a great part of what they are doing. Their working groups generally have um, a lot of Wikimedians participating in them. So I have just a couple of questions for um, our some people here that are part of working groups, and that's Jake and Jamie here, and maybe Christine if she wants to participate. Um, so I want to ask you how and why did you get involved, and how has this involvement helped your work, but also your Wikimedia collaborations, and what has the experience been so far? Like, what is missing? What do you think that it could be done better, basically? So I'm in a leading position because this is my business. Um, but when I joined the Smithsonian Working Group, there was no white paper yet. There was no vision for a Wikipedia residence. I had no, um, I had no intention or expectation that it would result in a client, if you will. Um, I just knew that this was important work, and so I wanted to be involved. And I think that's uh, a lesson not just for consultants, but also potential Wikipedia as a resident or people who want to do partnerships, you have to just show up. I just started showing up to the working group meetings. I started having talks with JJ. Um, I made a slide deck because I thought like, hey, you know what? You could do something cool with your branding. And I just showed it to her. I just started throwing things out there. And then pretty soon the working group um, coalesced around. I reviewed the white paper, of course, which um, was extremely important uh, for the Smithsonian to publish. It really put the the, the, the ground sweeping. Um, and then, you know, when it came time to implement the the desire of the working group to have a Wikipedia residence, I was there. And you know, so I think again, I'm a I'm a consultant. This is my business, but um, I mean, I'm a Wikimedia. But uh, you know, go where you think something interesting is happening, and lurk there. Be useful, and then, <laughs> uh, you know, 
Oh, then we yeah. <laughs> I mean, work in the online, like, hang out, learn the culture, yeah. yes. <laughs> not stalk. Um, you know, and, then, and then, you know, good things happen, whether it's financial or just a partnership. You know, you have to be in the room and that's that build the relationship. I build a really strong relationship with JJ. Um, who's an amazing, I kind of, I think of her as the chief of staff of the work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, you have to, you have to go, you have to get, you have to get in the door, build the relationships. And um, I, I got involved because this is essential to our climate catastrophe. Um, this data can literally inform policy decisions on climate change. So I don't think there's, it's one of the most important things we can do. Um, and uh, I think I'm going to leave it at that for me. James Ray, New Yorker. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, for those that don't know, that's how I have my job, is I lurked with the best of the lurkers. <laughs> uh, um, Jill James, she works at the National Archives and Records Administration. Uh, she worked with Dominic Bird McDevitt, who ran their Wikipedia work for over a decade. And when she went to the National Agricultural Library, um, she kind of wanted to do the Wikipedia thing, but she wasn't sure because ag agriculture is their niche. Uh, and then she finally got a, an edit-a-thon together, and I showed up. And they were like, we need someone who edits around agriculture. And I was like, Oh, and, here. Um, and that and that was that was six years ago. Um, I find community to be very important. That's why I'm involved in the working group. Uh, I think, like Giovanna was saying, it's easy for us to silo ourselves, especially um, especially when you think about lambs, because sometimes I feel. Um, not personally, but sometimes I feel like my institution is excluded because uh, it, it's a science institution. It's sure. focused on research. Um, but the amazing thing is, is I, we also have an art collection. Um, we also have so many things. Um, and I have tried to share all of that with Wikipedia. Uh, and so I want us to connect because I think a big part of when you're Wikipedia in residence um, you have to really advocate for yourself. And I think when we have working groups and when we um, come together in community, we learn how to, how to um, advocate together. And we can be like, okay, I want to work here. Um, here are the things that I need. Here's how I can hopefully get paid better and paid more. And here's ideas for how I can improve. Uh, my work, and I, I think that's another big thing, is we need to share how we do our work. That's why I think what we're doing on Meta is really important, is sharing, um, here's here's how you have an edit on, here's how you set this up, here's how you get on the pipeline, and I think that's really what it is, is uh, creating a community of practice and sharing our, our information, and it makes, it's helped me be a better trainer, it's helped me refine how I think about things, it's helped me um, kind of brainstorm uh, improving training and how I share things with people. And I think my experience has been great. And it's also helped me realize that some of these big projects that I've dreamed about, um, it's helped me bring them into fruition because I feel like our meta work is kind of something that I've always wanted to do. And it's inspired me to create a similar thing on our NAL wiki project is sharing all of my training materials so that all the other agricultural institutions can, can find them and use them. I want to say something real quick. Just about uh, Meta and the commentation. Um, just FYI, we are working right now in this Golan Wiki Meta documentation revamp which is being led at this point by Susanna and us. And there is a working group for that as well. So if you want to join, and you want to be part of this uh, revamp of the GLAM pages on Meta, let me know that I can put you in contact with the working group who's working on that. Um, I'll keep this short because I think uh, Jamie said all the things that I meant to say. 
um, uh, much more eloquently than I would have. But um, I, yeah, I got involved in the DBLA uh, Wikimedia Working Group, uh, mostly, I think, because I wanted to better understand um, their pipeline and particularly their uh, structured data, data on commons uh, mo data model. Um, I'm mostly a wiki, a wiki data person, um, so this was uh, a good way to sort of like bridge between the skills that I had and this group of people who were also, you know, a, a small focused group of cultural heritage uh, folks, but um, from a different cross section of libraries that I normally interact with. Um, and so it was really um, helpful to um, to learn from them and to sort of see where I could learn how to speak to people who weren't metadata librarians. Um, and uh, in particular, like there was a there's a lot of skill sharing in this group, and um, and also like you know the the very level of commitment and lurking. Um, I want to underscore lurking because <laughs> sometimes I'm a lurker, sometimes I'm the person who's like I'll write the charge, I'll write it. <laughs> Um, and sometimes, um, you know, sometimes, uh, like I'm learning a lot from, uh, you know, like from Susanna and, um, or sometimes I'm the person who's like, I will explain open refine to you, yes. like, um, get on zoom now. Um, so, um, so that's been, it's been a really nice exchange. Um, and, uh, and I think like it's really complementary to other working groups that I've been on, like the, um, I, I've been involved in the Wikidata affinity group before, um, and the Wikibase working hour, that's the sort of subgroup of that. Um, and th those are like a really broad cross section, real, a huge free for all, really high quality, but also like kind of large. And this is, um, uh, it's, I, I feel really lucky to participate in both because in the, with, with the DBLA groups, we, I feel like we have room to have in-depth conversations that aren't 100% public um, and so to talk through like where we're coming from. So um, that's been really, really helpful. Um, and I'm looking at your last question. What is the experience? I don't know what's missing except for in-person hangouts, but we're yeah. getting that this week. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, actually, I, I'll say one thing that's hard is that in any group like this, you have people with varying levels of commitment and also really fluctuating bandwidth. And so moving things forward, even when there's a lot of will, it can be hard. And so I think like if I, if there was one part to cover your expectations about, it would be the timelines for things. And because um, it's, you know, we all have day jobs. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a little bit more. I just, I think that's been the great thing about the DPLA working group is uh, we've had a lot of grace for each other as we've worked on things and as like timelines have fluctuated and what we have available. I also want to say I learned so much from Christine about Open Refine and she has gotten on Zoom and explained things to me. And I think that's the other nice thing about like this little bit smaller working group is we can be honest with each other about where we're lacking and we can work together to gain those skills. And through this, we've been able to kind of work through some workflows to share with the, the hubs and the partners um, to help them work more with their collections, uh, help get them online and add information to them and stuff like that. And I think that's been really great. And like right now we're working on a project uh, to help make wiki data items for all of the contributors. And that and that's a little unwieldy, but we're making good progress on it where we'll be able to go through the hubs and add each individual institution because some of them are very small and some of them are very big, but there's a lot of them. Um, some of them are complex, and some of them are complex, <laughs> and we have to figure out the semantics. So thank you. I just wanted to add it. Thank you so much, you all. And now I want to open to the room. So the the question that I had before, right? There's so a comment online. Oh, oh. Let's see. Where do I see the comment yeah, online? The Go to the four. Yeah. Q&A. Oh, nice. Uh, Siobhan's comment. Yay. Oh, she agrees with me. Reclaim <laughs> <laughs> uh, working, lurking. <laughs> so she's saying, I second what Jake has said about BHL engagement. Go where interesting things are happening. Weak folks should do the same. Explain what you have been working on. Engage with folks in the community you are interested in collaborating with. Uh, what is missing? More editors. There is so much to do and surprisingly few, editor, few editors actively engaged. Hopefully this will be uh, solved when the BHL Wiki Working Group finalizes schema workflows, documentation, and training. Yeah. I, 
None of the BHL work would happen without Siobhan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, and then the last thing about, uh, I think that's one of the important things about um, following the interests is when we go into spaces where there's lots of information, like when we're talking talking about like the topic of climate change and data related to it. Sometimes when you go there as a wiki person, you're meeting a whole pool of potential editors. Mm -hmm. And that's the cool thing is that we can hop in there and be like, oh, let me show you what you can do with this. Recruit. And how to use it and let me recruit you. Okay. Let me just like read. Um, so as I said before, like, this is, we have the platforms, we have the Wikimedia and the residents, and we have the Wiki project, but we are not meeting in the intersection point. We are a little bit siloed. Maybe the working groups are like, it's a solution for that. Uh, so how can we do better? How can we make Glam working groups better? Uh, how we can collaborate together really, truly? And that's the question that I want to, to offer. Can I just get a couple of questions? We'll probably only going to be able to take two or three. If you just raise a hand, then we'll make a quick queue. Mike, anyone else? We have a situation where uh, a WIR is brought in because a, a working group had already been established. Have there been situations where the WIR has come in and discovered that the expectations and the understanding of the institution are out of skew with reality? Yes. Can you stand up? I don't want to name names, but part of the work of a Wikipedia in residence is to align the expectations of the institution with reality. It's part of the job. Anyone else? That's most of my job mm -hmm. is tempering, especially scientists, their expectations of what they can do on Wikipedia and what that looks like. Yeah. Um, thank you, Gia. You were awesome. Thank you, everybody.